Hello, welcome to another episode of Mac Minute. My name is Mike Myers, and today we're going to talk about how to run Windows on your Mac. First of all, you may want to ask, why would I want to do that? And there are good reasons to run Windows on your Mac. First of all, you may have legacy programs that there isn't a Mac version for, and you may want to not get rid of them, so you can either run Windows on your Mac. And there's a bunch of other reasons you can run Windows on your Mac. I, it's becoming less and less re required, I think, because most of the games you can get on a PC uh, or on the Mac and actually run much better on the Mac, frankly. So I do definitely run lots of Windows, lots of other operating systems like Ubuntu also on my Mac. And that's partially because of, I reverse engineer malware. And of course, malware is all over the place on Windows and you gotta be on a Windows machine to reverse engineer Windows malware. And you're gonna find me also, so I'm gonna show you some of the, I actually have servers, I have Windows 2008 server, I think I've got 2012 server, 2013 server, whatever it is running on here. And I'm gonna show you how. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this and I'm gonna tell you the way I do it and the way that I don't do it and why. And you need to make the decision for yourself, what is the best way? First of all, the Mac comes with something called Boot Camp, which allows you to install Windows and Mac on the same machine. And when it boots up, you determine which one you want to go into. So when you do that, basically you boot into Windows and your Mac no longer is working. So you cannot use any of the features on the Mac. If you are on uh, the Macintosh, you can't get to the Windows files. They are completely separate things because you booted into them separately. Now, there are other ways you can do that using uh, a virtualization technology. Like I'm going to show you VMware, which is what I use. There's also Parallels. Both of them are great products. I do not want to say bad things about Parallels. The only reason I do not use Parallels is I have VMware servers on Windows and on other things. I have uh, other VMware products that I want to work with. So that's why I use VMware Fusion. And they basically are both very equivalent to each other. I would have a hard time if you did not have any reason to use VMware to tell you not to use Parallels. It is a great product. I have actually used it in the past and I do like it. I just happened to use VMware for other things a lot more and I just stuck to VMware so it was more portable. But what I'm going to show you is it running, with VMware it runs on top of your Mac operating system. So you see me on the virtual desktop of the Mac and you see all the stuff out here and you're gonna notice that I have two extra drives. One of them is called VMs and one of them is called transfer. And this is actually, I don't know if I can pick it up to show it to you or not, probably not. This is this external drive and it has all my VM servers on it so that's what's plugged in over on the side. I already have VMware running, and you see it down here at the bottom, VMware Fusion. And when I start doing this, I'm going to show you my Mac running multiple copies of Windows at the same time while my Mac is working. This is the power of the power of VMware, and it's part of the power of the Mac. The whole mark, the Mac architecture itself provides you the ability to do this. So you're going to see me running multiple versions of Windows simultaneously on top of my running Mac. When I do this, though, my head's gonna go away. So you're gonna hear talking from the full behind the world, so. All right, so down here at the bottom, I have VMware Fusion. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to bring up the virtual machine library window, which is listing all the virtual machines that I have on this hard drive. And you can see right here, I have reverse engineering, uh, malware reverse engineering VMs. I have CentOS. I have a Linux TAC server that I use for uh, doing penetration testing. I have uh, different CentOS servers that I use, again, for penetration testing. Uh, Windows 8, I have Ubuntu, I have a couple versions of Unix on my own, I have CentOS, I have Backtrack, which is a security tool. Um, I have Windows Server 2008, Windows 7, and I also have Windows 8 running on here as well. So right now running in the background, if I come up here to Window, you're going to see I have my reverse engineering VM. So this is my reverse engineering VM, and just to show you that this is not a static, and here goes my more of me away. This is, you see my cursor blinking, I can bounce back and forth between the different debuggers, no problem. I'm going to bring up Windows 7. Here's the Windows 7. You see Internet Explorer right here, I'm gonna bring up Internet Explorer. You see it connected to MSN, you see it's really, really fast too. This is one of those things like the Mac it provides for Windows machines to run better on it than it, they run on their own, own hardware. That's really truly my, my belief. So there's Windows 7 and you see it's still loading stuff. I'm gonna come up and go to Windows 8, which I do not like Windows 8, personally. And you can see I'm bouncing around inside of Windows 8. There's Internet Explorer coming up. So you can see, you know, very quickly, I can bounce around inside of a Windows platform. And now I'm gonna go and bring up Windows Server 2008. So here's Windows Server. 
Uh, apparently I never finished the install of Windows Server on this machine, but you can see Windows Server is running just fine. Okay, so I wanna show you real quickly why I think VM running on top of the Mac, or Parallels for that matter, is better than the actual machine. Besides the fact that it can run all different operating systems at one time, there is some other advantages, and I wanna show them to you right now. So I'm, I've done a little edit here, and I've gone over to Windows 8, cleaned up my desktop so you can just see what was going on a little quicker. And I'm in Windows 8, and what I've done in Windows 8 is I went to the desktop option right here. So I'm on the desktop option, and now I'm just gonna shrink this. This is another thing too is, uh, I'm gonna grab a different corner than this because it's Windows 8. You can resize your des your uh, image, your desktop or anything, just by dragging it like this. So I'm still gonna be kind of behind the, the thing here, but I'm on the desktop and I'm going to go into the Blue Angels folder. And I can drag from my Mac, I'm just going to grab this one, I'm gonna drag it over to the Mac, to the Windows 8, and you see the little plus sign, and I'm gonna drop it. What did I just do? I just copied a file from my Mac to the Windows machine simply by dragging and dropping. This is why I think that this is the best way to run Windows on a Mac. It allows you to share files very, very easily. The other thing is if you allow VM to do this, which I do not have it turned on, I'll show this in a future episode because it's a little bit more complicated and I'll do it for other, some certain reasons which I'll explain later. You can actually run Windows programs from the Mac without being in this window. And I can show this to you. So if you have, say, Microsoft Office on your P on your PC, but you don't have it on your Mac, and you're used to using it on the PC, you can share that application and run it from inside VMware like it is a native application to the Mac. It's a whole separate thing we'll talk about at some other time. It's, it's very neat how that works. But you saw me transfer a file simply by dragging it from one to the other. So I'm going to take this file and I'm going to actually go the other direction. And you see now, I drag it back to the Mac. I just showed you how easily integrated you can do uh, stuff with the Mac and the PC. It really is that simple with something like VMware or Parallels. I do not use Bootcamp mainly for the reasons you just saw, plus I use VMware so much for other things. It's just, I want to be able to take my reverse engineering VM, put it onto a PC if needed to do reverse engineering or stick it onto some kind of VM server and my Windows 2008 server, I wanna move from point to point. That's just why I use VMware. Parallels, again, it's just as good. You can do the same type of things with Parallels as you can with VMware. They are kinda of like camera companies. One gets a little better than the other one, then the other one catches up and goes past them. So they just keep leapfrogging each other uh, every time they come out with the new versions. So I don't have nothing to say bad about any of the VM or the solutions for running Windows, but I will say if you want to run them together, which is how I would personally recommend it, is they use VMware or Parallels. And both of those are very inexpensive. They're like 60 or $70 uh, for the programs to install. And they're very easy to use, very easy to set up. And if you have, here's the other advantage to using a VM. Uh, I don't know about Parallels, but VMware has a converter. So you have a PC and you're moving to a Mac. You can take and download the free converter from VMware, get an external hard drive and copy basically make a VM out of your out of your running Windows machine. So you install the software on it, it writes to the external hard drive, it makes a new machine in a VM, it's an exact copy of the machine, your desktop machine. You put that onto your Mac or stick it onto an external hard drive like I just did, and you have your old machine in your Mac ready to run and easily transfer documents back and forth. If you are a converter from Windows and your machine did not die when you before you converted, this is a great way not to lose anything and have everything you had before. And more than likely, when you do that, the Windows machine that you hated because it ran so slow, is gonna run like a dream on this new Mac. You think you got a brand new Windows machine with the same stuff you had on it before. So this is Mac Minute this week. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. We'll see you next week. For show notes for this show, contacts and more, go to the techzen.tv website where you can get show notes for all of our shows. We love to hear from our viewers and listeners. We have an email, a Twitter, and a phone number where you can contact us for each show. For details, visit the techzen.tv website and get the show details. You can also make a video and upload it somewhere like YouTube or Vimeo and then just send us a link. You never know, you may see your video in a future show. You can get all of our shows delivered automatically to your favorite device by going to your favorite podcast website like iTunes and subscribing. Each of our shows also has a YouTube channel you can subscribe to to get regular updates. Our shows are also available on most internet radio networks like Stitcher and TuneIn Radio. You can also watch and listen to our shows on Xbox, 
TiVo, and Roku. You can even find us on your Zoom.